Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar here tonight. Um, we are excited to uh, get this webinar started for each and every one of you. I just wanted to say that we have a jam-packed webinar. As a matter of fact, we have people from many different countries who are actually watching and listening in. So we're excited. We're excited for all of you. Um, we're very excited to share some valuable information for each and every one of you. Uh, I understand we have many different professions that are listening in and also watching the webinar. So uh, we are excited for you. And uh, before we get started, I just want to wish all of you a happy new year. Uh, wishing you abundance in all areas of your life. And as we get started here, a uh, brand new year, we have many people, obviously, who do what? They start their New Year's resolutions. Um, we know a lot of people reflect. We know a lot of people take the time um, to uh, make 2013 better than 2012. And uh, the reason why we're doing this webinar here today is because uh, we feel there is a huge need in going over the topic we're going to go over here today. Now, we're, not, we're only going to scratch maybe a fraction, but enough, enough to get you to think a little bit differently and enough to start the process of having you attract the things that you want uh, that you have put on your New Year's resolution. You know, I hate the term resolution, uh, and what really, what people really need to do is to do New Year commitments. It's the commitments that you keep that's going to allow you to, again, uh, attract the things and uh, achieve the things that you're looking to do on your list. So always change the word resolution to commitments because when you're committed to something and you put all the other qualities necessary to achieve the things that you're looking for, and we're going to help you uh, with this webinar here today, um, you can accomplish anything that you, uh, again, uh, put your thought to, and uh, so we're excited to get started here. Now, in this webinar, um, whether you have no experience in business or you haven't achieved any goals that you've written, um, uh, or perhaps you've experienced some level of success, whether, again, you're a business owner, whether you're a network marketer, an internet marketer, uh, commission-based uh, um, business uh, 1099 person. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. This is going to be a webinar that can help each and every one of you take your business to the next level because of the things you're going to be able to achieve based on the new way of putting your goals down um, for 2013. Now, for those of you that are stuck at at your current pay level, this webinar is going to help you. Millionaires who are stuck, who are not quite billionaires yet, or, or people who are earning, you know, 1.5, 2.5 million dollars. Why are they stuck there and not getting to that 10 million dollars or that 100 million dollar status? It's not more about how much training you need. It's not more about, you know, having more skills. That is a part of the success puzzle, but how you write your goals will determine the actions that you take, which is going to determine the results that you're going to get. Now, all of us have heard a form of this. Uh, top percent of the successful people write out their goals. Um, I was one of those people back uh, 11 years ago where I had all my goals in my head. I, I didn't really need to write down my goals. I was a very driven person. I was very uh, action-oriented, but I never wrote down my goals. And it wasn't until I started writing out my goals that I started creating more success, but then again, didn't achieve all the goals that I wanted. But the reality is that the top percent of successful people they don't just write out their goals. They do more than just write out their goals. And we're going to explain to you in this webinar what that is. Most of us are taught that if we write out our goals, we have a higher chance of achieving them. And that's, that's sort of correct. But you'll better understand after today what is necessary to achieve your goals in business 
in your relationships and etc and not many are taught how to write their goals in a way that feeds the subconscious mind so it starts attracting the the things necessary to achieve the requests and and people forget how to dream. You know, you ask people to write down some goals, and some people will sit there with a paper and pen in their hand, and they'll sit there staring um, or daydreaming. They don't know how to dream. They don't know what they want to achieve. They just don't know how to go about doing it because um, they've given up, especially those who just have a job. Well, we want to change that for all of you listening here today. And you hear this often. You want to believe in your industry. You want to believe in your products and your services. And more importantly, you've got to believe in yourself. This couldn't be farther than the truth. But how does one increase someone's belief in themselves? Well, obviously, we don't definitely have the time uh, to scratch the surface on all the solutions and the answers in increasing one's belief in themselves because there are many variables. Now, most companies some franchises they have a getting started manual or a system to help you write down your goals the reality is and I've had this experience in the past the reality is that if for, especially those in the network marketing um, uh, profession most upline partners that go over the goals with you kind of skim over this and you'll understand this when we get to the goals the common goals that almost everybody puts down we see a significant need for what we're going to talk about today as so many people are redoing, they're starting their dream board this year, they're jotting down their goals for 2013, short-term goals, long-term goals. Um, I hate the word dream board. I like to call it a vision board or a reality board because the reality is you attract your what your vision is, what you keep seeing in your head over and over and over again. Uh, so um, that's why we decided to let the new year kind of kick in a little bit. Many has probably dropped off their goals. Some people don't, probably already don't believe they can achieve their goals. Um, and so this is why we decided to put this training together for all of you. Now, if people spend time writing out their goals, creating that vision board, do the activities that will move them closer to their goals, then why is it that most people will not achieve their goals this year? They market, they talk to people, they promote, they recruit, they present, they enroll, they sell, they read the books, they go to conventions, they go to uh, leadership trainings. Well, <laughs> Again, there's many variables uh, that one must have, learn, and become in order to achieve the goals, like definitely belief. You have to have belief in yourself. You have to have skills. You have to have the desire, the drive. You have to be consistent. You have to be coachable. You have to have a plan. You have to have a marketing system. You have to have a daily activity. And, of course, a bunch of other stuff. So what is the missing link? Well, what if we said that 95% of goals are predictable? So if I took everybody, and we have, we have tons of people on this training today. If I took everybody on, we've got some very successful people also uh, listening in right now. We have people that may be brand new in a profession, people that maybe have never written their goals and they really want to write their goals and they want to do it in a way where they can manifest and attract the things that they're putting down. Well, let me share with you 95% of the goals. And for those of you that are leaders, you'll obviously see this with the people that, you, again, perhaps you are building an organization with, you will actually see this as their goals. Okay? So, let me tell you what most of the goals are that uh, again, for those that are listening and watching right now, you need to be aware of this because, again, some of those people that are listening that are in direct sales, network marketing, and the MLM profession, you need to understand this so you can better help those on your team. Okay? Goals for 2012. 
Now, I'm going back a year, okay? This is what was written down for goals of 2012, okay? And usually it starts off, well, why did you join this company? Or why did you join this profession? Why do you want to achieve, uh, you know, what is it that you want to achieve with this company? What do you want to achieve in 2012? And let me tell you the ten, nine, nine common goals that we see people want to achieve over and over and over again, okay? As I'm putting these up here, they're going to look familiar to you, okay? People want to make more money. People want to be financially free. People want to lose weight, spend more time with family and loved ones. They want to travel more. They want to buy a new house. They want to buy a new car. They want to be their own boss. They want to donate to more charities. And maybe there's one or two or three other ones that we kind of see 95% of the time. Now, here's what happens. The year goes by, and boom. The same goals that you had last year are put to accomplish this year. Well, this year is going to be different. This year, I'm going to actually become financially free. This year, I am going to lose weight. This year, I'm going to buy that car that I didn't last year. And the reality is, of course, there's a lot of different variables into why people are not achieving them. Okay? And, you know, why the way you put down these goals cannot manifest them and cannot attract the things, the people, the opportunities in order for you to attract these. So, um, again, what is wrong with writing the goals this way? Okay? Why can you not create and manifest financial freedom? Why can you not manifest traveling more? Why can't you not attract and manifest um, buying a new house, okay? Why can you not write these goals the way they are and think that you can accomplish them? Because I'll tell you why. Well, it's not going to be me. It's going to be Joe Garcia, uh, the person that I have privileged to bring on this training that's going to teach you how to create goals that will increase um, you achieving them, how to program your subconscious mind to start attracting and creating the importance of playing your movie every day. This is going to be very, very powerful for all of you. The difference between working harder on activities and chasing growth versus working harder on your thoughts and mind and attracting growth. Well, for those of you who have never heard of Joe Garcia, who is Joe Garcia? Well, I'm, I'm going to scratch just the surface here, but Joe Garcia is a master distributor of a billion-dollar global company. He's got over 880,000 distributors in his organization. He is a master at pioneering emerging markets. He has personally created over 42 millionaires across the globe. He was featured in the greatest networker in the world. He was featured in the Networking Times, the recent one uh, in the November issue. He's uh, featured in the Networking Times of Europe. He travels the globe teaching people how to become entrepreneurs. He's a mentor to so many people, so many companies, many organizations. He immerses himself in self-growth and teaches others how to prosper by working harder on themselves than in their business. He's somebody that I learned tremendously from and has helped uh, me switch what I was doing as I'm sharing with you here today into what I'm doing today. And boy, let me just tell you uh, the paradigm shift. So Joe, are you on the call with us today? Yes, I am, Andreas. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Absolutely. Well, Joe, as you heard, we got a lot of people, a lot of people on this call from many different professions, from many different countries um, who want to learn why is it that the, the goals that I've put on there, why is it so hard to manifest uh, or to create the necessary actions needed? And I know, Joe, uh, from knowing you for seven years, 
um, you're, you're, you truly have a way in delivering your message where people start to think, people start to open up, people start to make the changes that is missing, um, and not purposely missing, but missing uh, in, in the professions and getting people to achieve their goals. So I have several questions I'd love to ask of you, um, and maybe you can spend whatever time you need in order to get people to understand why what they're doing last year, the year before, or what maybe they started doing this year, perhaps they can redo it in a way that you're going to teach it, and then they'll finally understand how that can play a major part in attracting the success that they're looking for to create. So my first question, Joe, to you, basically two questions, is why are these common goals, the way that they are written, why can they never manifest? And how do you program your subconscious mind to attract and to start creating the things that you put on paper? Great questions, Andreas. You know, I just want to let everyone know out there what I'm going to be sharing with you, and particularly with these questions that Andreas is going to ask me. It's not coming from a book. Uh, it's coming from experience of training hundreds of thousands of people right around the globe, being in the trenches, and you, you name the country, I've been there. And just watching people, when I first got started in the industry of network marketing and in business back in the 90s, one of the things that I decided to do was watch people. It's amazing, ladies and gentlemen, how you can learn from people that are getting results. And I recognized earlier on in my career, and the best decision I ever made is I wasn't looking for that right compensation plan. I wasn't looking for that right business model because I didn't even know what a right compensation plan or the right product or right business model look like. Uh, I could have the greatest product in the world right in front of me, and most people like this, you wouldn't know the difference. It, what I did, Andreas, that changed my life forever is I went looking for a mentor. I uh, bought into the, the idea that if you surround yourself with the best, you become the best. You surround yourself with million dollar earners, you will become a million dollar earner. And I recognize that at a young age of 24 years old, that's when I got started in the industry, uh, is I needed some really good people to surround myself with because if I didn't, it would take me a long time to get to my goals. So one of the challenges that uh, people have, not just in network marketing and business in general, is they really don't understand how the brain works. And it's amazing when you start to really understand and get to the conscious level, and I'm going to repeat this, when you start to understand, and the only way you're going to understand is get to a conscious level, when you're at a certain conscious level, everything starts to come easy for you, including manifesting your goals. And one of the things that I observed in my life was generic goals never come true. And it's because we have two minds, ladies and gentlemen. Many of you have probably have heard this. You can you know, uh, read tons of books like The Science of Getting Rich and The Power of the Subconscious Mind. You know, two great books that discuss this. We have two minds. We've got the conscious mind. We've got the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is firing at over 40 million receptors a minute. 40 million receptors. And the conscious mind is firing only 2,000 receptors. So the subconscious mind never forgets any memory. It's stored way in the back of the amygdala, which is in the back of the brain. So what happens when someone goes out and sets out a generic goal? The subconscious mind does not know the difference. The conscious mind does, but you need to get into the subconscious mind. You need to get into that programming where it understands what you really want. This is why people take two steps forward and three steps back, because there's no destination. It's like me picking you up, Andreas, in Plainfield, and I drive up to your front of your house, you get in the car and you say, Joe, where are we going? I don't know, Andreas, where the car takes us, we're gonna go. You know, life isn't that way, you know? And this is what people do with their goals. If it's not specific, you cannot visualize it, you cannot dream it, you cannot experience it because it's not what you really want. So one 
I started understanding earlier on and go, wow, how do I program that subconscious mind? So if my subconscious mind is firing 40 million receptors a minute, if I get into that subconscious mind, I can attract great things into my life. And this is how the process happened, just by observing people who are getting what they want, Andres. Wow. Wow. So if you can give an example, like when you're saying specific goals, um, let's just take one of them, for instance. We talked about, you know, people, um, you know, they want to buy, they want to buy a house. Well, as you mentioned, they can never manifest it because it's too general. How should people write out that goal? Well, basically, you know, and uh, particularly in our business model, um, our industry, people are going to want to look at uh, physical things, and usually people write down their their dream dream house or their dream car, their dream vacation. Uh, you know, a lot of these type of things that we all want to have more of, better of. You know, that kind of thing. So it's it's real important that you know when you write down a goal, you need to know what the house looks like, how many rooms does it have, you know, what does your bedroom look like. What does your rec room look like? You know, if you're going to have a man cave, you know, put that down. What does your office look like? The more specific and the more detail that you put down on a piece of paper, the more that you're going to attract that into your life. And I'm going to show you a little later how you can do that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let me ask you the next question here. So how important is playing this movie? This is something that... Uh, um, ever since I've known you, Joe, you keep saying, you know, what movie are you playing in your head today? And, uh, you know, in the beginning, I, I, I understood, uh, I understand more now how valuable and how, how powerful uh, in attracting the things that you want based on the goals that you put down. So how important is playing the movie in your head every day and how long should somebody be playing this movie in their head and maybe explain a little bit what is this movie about here's the thing guys uh, Andreas it was about um, uh, I think it was 1994 1995 and I kept on you know I was so into personal development um, I it was like a, a major lifestyle change for me and I just went in and I started you know, reading all kinds of books, attending all kinds of seminars, and every teacher, every coach would talk about thoughts become things. You know, most people understand that, but I understood thoughts become things. I, I, I understood the premise of it, but I, I believed I really didn't believe it. <laughs> most people don't believe it hmm. until I started understanding and got into quantum physics. You know, I can under spiritually, uh, you know, I can start understanding why thoughts become things. You have to have a tremendous amount of faith uh, and experiences and recollection and how it all works. But when I got into quantum physics, just the basis of it, I started understanding how things materialize in this universe. And one of the major, um, in the last three years, insights into quantum physics and I'm not trying to get too technical here, but there, there's been many studies that thoughts do become things now. As soon as you create a thought in the universe, that goes out in the universe, and, and scientists are now trying to prove that this, this thought is now starting to be created in a parallel universe. And uh, think about how big that is, Andreas. Mm -hmm. And the more I got into quantum physics and studying people and finding out what really is working for people, I started understanding that people had a vision of what they really wanted. It was so embedded into their lifestyle, into their mindset, that they were achieving these things very quickly. And the thousands of hundreds of thousands of people I've helped develop themselves into entrepreneurs and in reaching their goals and their dreams. The ones that have become millionaires, Andreas, I want everybody to write this down because this is so impactful. The ones that have become millionaires have mastered playing movie, the right movie in their head. Unfortunately, most people, as we know, 
don't have any control over th th our thoughts or their brain. And the movie they're playing is everything that they don't want in life. And the reason how you can tell, just walk out the door tomorrow, go into the rat race, go to a church, anywhere where lots of people congregate, and you'll see the expressions on people's faces. And while watching people, you'll see that their thoughts are on their problems. They're paying, playing that video, that video on their mind, that movie in their mind. How am I going to pay those bills at the end of the month? Geez, my health is not doing so well. Wow, you know, that five years ago I had a terrible experience that they're still holding on. You know, all these negative emotions, it's amazing how many people, majority of people, are anchored to the past. So when I got started in, in network marketing, and I started really understanding this thought process about thoughts become things, and I started consciously understanding that, I started playing around with visualizing. And, and one of the things that happened to me, Andreas, is when I got into the visualizing process, and I'm going to share with everybody here my goal setting process, but when I got involved in the visualizing process and focused on that dream every single day, great things started to happen to me. Things started falling onto my lap. I started attracting great things. Distractions were no longer distractions. I, I leaped over them. Mm. I very rarely got off track because that vision was in front of me every single day. Wow. And the reason why it's important playing a movie in your head, several years ago, I think it was five, six years ago, NASA did an experiment. And they put uh, concave glasses on 35 astronauts. Concave glasses made you look upside down. They wanted to observe what happens to these astronauts when they're in space. So they put these glasses on, and these glasses made them look upside down 24-7. Can you imagine one of those glasses 24-7? And what they did is they found that the day 26, they saw started seeing right side up. See, what happened is the neural pathways in the brain start to develop because they knew consciously and subconsciously that these glasses were making them upside down. It was driving them nuts. So it, it, their will to see right side up started developing neural pathways. And about day 26, all of them started seeing right side up. They did a second experiment with different astronauts. Day 15, they took it off for one day, those glasses. And they started all over again. You know, Andres, it took them another 26 days to see right side up. So I thought, mm. focus and consistently visualizing your goal, your dream. The brain will develop enough neural pathways because it has to get what you want. And when you focus and understand how powerful this works, you are on your way to an incredible life. The challenge is we do it for four days. We take three to four days off. Like that experiment, just take one day off. It puts you back another 26 days. It takes about 26, 27, 28 days to have the neural pathways in your brain get to the point where great things happen. Wow. So think about having a movie played in your head of what you want that's so detailed that you play it 15, 20, 30 minutes every day um, to the point where your subconscious mind is starting to create it. Um, you know, it, it's such a powerful thing, and I know it can get into so many different aspects of that, but just that alone, I know people, if most people can start incorporating that, and not let a negative thought interrupt their movie throughout the day. Um, you know, people can manifest things as of after this webinar. Just again, what you just uh, what you just mentioned. Um, well, explain the difference between um, working harder on activities, and, and, and what I mean by that, Joe, is that 
you know, we have a lot of people who are learning the, the how to, how to go out there and market, how to go out there and prospect, how to go out there and get new business, new customers, new client, new, new distributors, uh, how to go out there and close people, how to go out there in three ways and present. And all that stuff is obviously necessary in the process of building your business. Um, uh, but what's the, and that's what I mean when working harder on activities. So what's the difference between working harder on activities and chasing growth? Because you can grow if you work really hard on activities, versus working harder on your thoughts and your mind and attracting growth. Now I know you kind of covered this. <laughs> uh, I, if there's anything else you want to add. Again, because we see so many people, especially in the profession of network marketing, who work extremely hard in doing the activities, but again, not working hard on their thoughts and mind to to attract versus chasing. I, again, I found this out through observing. You know, there are a few people in my life that I looked up to years ago that I didn't see them recruit more people. I didn't see them sell more product than most people. Uh, I, I saw that they had some great skill sets, but it, it wasn't like uh, Superman uh, level, but they would get these amazing results. And the more I studied it, the more I started understanding why they had that magic touch, you know, that magic wand. You know, everything that I had developed and we're taught and we're programmed. The thing is, ladies and gentlemen, back of your brain, your amygdala. And your amygdala is what takes in everything that's happened in your life. All the programming that you've had from, uh, from birth, even in your womb, which has been proven, to your age now. So all that, uh, you know, I don't want to go negative, it's not garbage, but lots of stuff that go into your mind is garbage. But all the programming about money, about success, about relationships, about uh, you know war. You know, classic example and how environments change. I live outside of Toronto, Canada. You know, uh, 30 miles west of Toronto, I'm one hour from the U.S. border, from the New York State U.S. border. Here in Canada, growing up, I've never seen a gun. Never seen a gun outside of maybe a police holster. Never held onto a gun never thought of buying a gun, never was threatened. Here in Canada, we have very s severe laws about guns. Where an hour south, you know, we had that unfortunate incident in November um, uh, down in, in uh, Connecticut, and we have all this gun talk. And in the U.S., it's totally different, totally different. I'm not um, saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying... Because of programming in the U.S., because it's been programmed into the Constitution, the American citizens grow up with one idea about guns, and the Canadians grow up with another different set of uh, uh, thoughts about uh, guns. I only live one hour. See, I've watched the same TV all these years, but it's about programming. So you can change can you imagine how much program that you have over the years that have created your thoughts, have created your habits, and then obviously create your results? So when I started watching these people, I said, what kind of belief, what kind of programming that they have into their brain? And this is why, and I'll go back a little bit, this is why people set generic goals, Andreas, because when they write a goal down, we have a part of the amygdala, and the amygdala is there to protect you from getting outside your comfort zone. It's there, it's built in the, it, to protect you. From the ages of uh, your birth to the ages of seven, that part of the brain wasn't developed. Okay? That conscious side of the brain wasn't developed. So that part of the brain was put in there. So by the ages zero to seven, your parents taught you not to jump off a bridge. If you jumped off a bridge, you're going to get severely injured. So by the end of the age seven, you go into another phase, the brain goes in another phase where it starts to protect you. You know in your subconscious mind there knows if you jump off a bridge, you're you're or going to, your your entire system starts to go on an an alert phase. Your blood pressure goes up. 
You have warning bells all over the place. This is why when you get outside your comfort zone or you do something that's nearing your comfort, outside your comfort zone, you start to get sweaty. You start to get anxious, irritable sometimes. It's because your amygdala is back there telling you, don't do it, Andreas. Danger, danger, don't do it. This is what happens with goals. People write down their goals. That part of the amygdala doesn't know anything different. It's because of your programming. So if it gets, if, if it's up against your programming, you will never achieve that goal. Never in a million years if you don't understand what's going on in your brain. So when I, up until I got into this industry, all my success was based because of my desire. You know, I wanted it bad, Andreas. And I would work harder than anybody to change my goal. In, in my athletic career, when I wanted to get a scholarship, I was, I was playing more soccer than anybody that I knew. I lived it. I dreamed it. I ate it. It was part of a lifestyle. I took that same energy into my network marketing business. And because of my hard work, I developed the skill sets. I started getting results. And I thought, wow. When my organization gets huge, I'm not going to have any time for my family and things that I want to enjoy. I need to learn how to work smarter, not harder. I need to manifest things, which is a word that everybody uses today, quicker, faster, better, with ease. And I kept and continued to re read books, continued to talk to people that seemed to uh, get results. A lot of them didn't know how they were doing it or eloquently share with you what they were doing. It's amazing to me. Pillow, I came down to understanding how you get from point A to point B. And here's my thought process, Andreas. So understanding the programming there is I started writing down all the beliefs that I felt I had about money, about relationships, about business, about myself, you know, empowering beliefs, disempowering beliefs that I could be aware of. Uh, one of the major challenges uh, after working with so many people over the years is majority of people, it's amazing to me, are held into the past. You know, something may have happened 30 years ago and they still have it in their amygdala there that they're not aware of that they're accessing that information constantly, constantly and, and it's stopping them from getting where to the next step. Because either they have huge fear because of that incident, they have huge jealousy, um, anger, guilt, all these emotions based on something happened years ago. And I'll share with you everybody a story. There was a lady in my organization a few years ago came to me, and this woman was talented, but she couldn't get to the next level. I saw her take two steps forward, three steps back, two steps forward, three steps back. I understood what was happening. She had some programming aspect to her, her life that was preventing her from getting moving forward. Something had happened in her life that was preventing her from moving forward. Here's what I asked her. Was there something in your life that you still think about today that happened 20, 30 years ago? And she said, no, Joe, of course not. I'm, I'm perfect. I'm great. I go, well, what I'd like you to do over the next week, I think there's something that holding you back. Uh, you know, you're, you're climbing the mountain with boulders on your shoulders. Can you, th can you think about it for me? She came me back the next day, and this is something that she had in her subconscious that she forgot about it on purpose. When she was a young girl, she was raped by her uncle. Can you imagine that? And she was not able to trust. Uh, she hadn't forgiven her uncle, she, the family. She hadn't forgiven her family because of what happened at that time. Uh, she, she grew up with this bitterness. And I saw that because she was constantly having confrontations with her leaders. Uh, she was in there, you know, there was always a problem going on. And she was bitter constantly. But she had this talent and great leadership skills and strong and powerful. And I had told her, you had to forgive your uncle or else he's going to be there all the time. You're not going to be able to move forward. You may need some professional help to let go of that. 
And she says, no, I, no, Joe, I've done the personal development. You're right, I need to make a decision. I've buried this. You know, it took her about a week, and she just came back to me smiling and, and enthusiastic and was like she was born again. You know, this woman climbed to the top in the business. She did more in the next year than she did the three previous years put together, just on that little incident. incident. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, everything that has to do with goals and achieving is based on moving forward, not holding on some incident in the past, moving forward. So I've got a five-step process that I go through. Number one, you got to be very specific on your dream. I don't believe in putting down 10, 15, 20 goals. You can put that on your buckets list. I really believe in focus. I believe in so razor-like focus. And when you're focused on what you really want, you're going to achieve it. But if you've got too many things that you want, it's going to be very difficult to focus on it. Focus is power. So you, I believe in putting down that main core desire. What will wake you up in the morning? You've got to fall in, in love with the dream. Fall in love with a dream. Second thing, and that has to be specific, either it's a dream home, car, what, vacationing, whatever you want that will wake you up in the morning. Second thing that you need to do is you've got to, as Andres shared with you, you've got to put it up on a dream board, vision board. He doesn't like the dream board, the vision board. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching Andres. So this vision board, uh, I've seen great uh, tools that you can put on your computer and put it to music. Uh, my movies, for example, uh, because that taps into the subconscious mind. Visual taps into the subconscious mind. Third thing you need to do is you need to play that movie, whatever it is. You know, for years, my goal when I started was this amazing uh, dream home. So before I got to bed, you know, I practiced visualizing in the morning and before I went to bed, before I went to sleep. Now it's just a major habit. I don't even have to think about it. And I just play it for at least five to ten minutes. You know, the more minutes you do it, the more money you're going to make because it's going to be embedded into the subconscious mind. So I played that visual over and over and over again. Third thing is affirmations. Affirmations is the spoken word. Um, and the affirmation I used for years, I'm so happy and grateful, then state your, your vision, and then I just add, thank you, God. You don't need to do that, but I did. I, I say that multiple times daily. If I'm thinking about a negative, if, um, you know, you know when you're off track, when you're feeling down, that's a good sign that you're thinking about something that you don't want. So I immediately go into my affirmations. I just state it out loud. It was an affirmation I've used for years. You know, in the morning, when I wake up, shower, don't even have to read anymore. It came from Tom Hopkins. Um, and I do it over and over and over again uh, for years here. Fourth thing that I did, and this is the key. Actually, this is, is this the 15, Andreas one? It is the yeah. fifth one, yep. Fifth one. And this is the key. This is the magic to me helping 42 millionaires over the last 11 years. If you get this, everything else will pale in comparison. You need to write this down. It's experience the goal. You know, you can't imagine what this process will do. It's very hard to visualize something that you haven't experienced. Right, Andreas? Correct. you got to have some major mental strength. But if you, you get to the point where you can experience it, and here's the thing, anyone that wants a dream car, I'm going to get them to go and rent that car for a day. Rent that car for a day. Or ask for a test ride. It's even better to rent that car for a day. You know, put down four or $500 and rent that exotic car. Well worth the money. You will get closer to your goal and move faster to your goal with this process in any other process. So you go in that car and feel that car. You're driving that car. You're renting it for that day. And you're feeling like it's yours. 
and you hold on to that feeling. So when you go into your visual exercises afterwards and you're feeling that, you can taste it. You've already tasted it. And here how, how I stumble across this is uh, I can remember my first trip promotion that I qualified for back in the 90s. As a young guy, young family, and we were uh, set up at the uh, one of the resorts in, in uh, Disney World. We had the whole resort to ourselves, and, and they even closed the park for us. And it was about 30 meters from around the world. It was my first opportunity to spend time with these leaders and their great families. And I go, wow, these people are incredible. I just want to be like them. After that weekend, that four days that we stayed down there, uh, it fueled my desire. My desire was red hot, but it, it fueled my desire to the next step. This is why events in our industry work. It's the most powerful way to build your team is through events. When you get people to an event, they feel the experience. They feel other people's excitement. Nothing else can experiment or come close to that feeling. You know, and then a few years after that, I got, I won another trip to, and I stayed at the uh, number one hotel at the time, which was the mansion in Dallas. You know, it was $15 a coffee. <laughs> um, you know, the fireplace alone in that hotel was over $20 million. It was made of gold. It was incredible. And I can remember sitting at the end of the um, bed with my wife we're in this great these two great rows it must have been a thousand dollars each and we sat at the end and I said you know Margaret this is what I want this is the kind of lifestyle that I want you know that fueled my desire it made me work even harder and then when I remembered going on my first business class trip going overseas on business class first class you know when you do that you don't want to flying coach anymore. It was that experience, that, that feeling of, of that goal, that feeling and going through that, that you want it more and more and more. So any time that you get into the feeling of your goal, great things will happen. You know, Andreas, the house that we're living in, you know, a number of years ago, there was a subdivision opening up here on the lake. So I took my family to view huge homes, multi-million dollar homes. My daughter, we walked in one of the show homes. She ran upstairs into a room that was um, decorated in, uh, in the uh, girl's, little girl's bedroom. She was six at the time. She said, Dad, this is my, Daddy, this is my bedroom. Uh, because I followed her up. I sat on the end of the bed. I go, wow. And I experienced her in that room and I felt it over and over and over again just walking through that house I think I took over an hour you know we're living in that same subdivision today Wow Andreas and I bet you know I go back to that experience probably we would not be here if it wasn't for that moment that I was able to experience experience and one of the things I shared with people for years and I've shared with you Andreas if you wanted to become the top distributor, top income earner, top network marketer, there is no greater personal development program than your experience. I'll add on to that. When you start to travel globally, you start to go into the trenches and you do meetings in foreign countries and, and you do all you need to do to grow those businesses in those markets, there is no greatest personal development program than going into those markets and traveling globally. You cannot experience that behind a computer or a telephone. So when I started doing that, you know, my skill sets grew tr incredibly. I became a better father, husband, became a better distributor, better leader, better builder. My conscious level went through the roof. You know, things like I'm sharing with you right now, I started understanding a lot more. And um, that's when, you know, ex when you experience that goal and you do that over and over again, it becomes a part of you, you want it more, you feel that desire. And this is the missing link, Andreas. I've seen it over the years is the people that have reached their goals and have 
incredibly smashed out their dreams is they got themselves into that experience at one time or another that fueled their desire and it took them to the next level. And that's the feeling that makes all the attraction stuff, that's a buzzword in this industry, is attraction marketing or attraction, but it's the feeling of experiencing that. When you do that, you follow that five-step system, I can guarantee you folks that will change. And I'll give you an example, another example. A number of years ago, I think it was four or five years ago, I'm down in Florida, we had to, I had to drive, pick up my car, got another home down in Florida, came back home, and it's about a 21-hour drive, and uh, I had one of my properties up for sale, and I did not get one offer in four months. You know, I've, I fixed this house, new kitchen, um, new uh, new washrooms, everything was updated into the house. house was about 60 years old. I couldn't believe uh, why I didn't have uh, an offer. You know, on top of that, the salesperson that I signed, it was a friend of mine, he had developed leukemia, it was fourth stage. So, you know, I had this double whammy. So for three months, he had these, uh, just uh, his other real estate professionals coming in telling me to take out this furniture, make it less clutter, and take out the carpet. And I hold on, hold on, hold on. And something inside me said, Joe, you got to practice what you preach. So I put together this five-step system in selling that house. So what I did is, is I visualized that house being sold. So my movie was going up to that house, and I... I reenacted it, going up to the house, and I could see the post with the sell sign on it, right? So that was my visualization. And then on the hour, I would say, I'm so happy and grateful that I sold the house. Thank you, God. On the hour, I'd say 10 times on the hour. So for one day, I did that, Andreas. The next morning, so after every, visualize, after every affirmation, I would visualize me going up the driveway, and the house was sold. Next morning, I got a call from from uh, the real estate agent, and the gentleman wanted to buy, put an offer in. Okay, and I went to meet with them, and we met in the kitchen. He says, "Joe, I love the house. You did great work on it. Uh, it's a no-brainer. I'm signing it." Right? And then I thought, okay, um, he had to get his financing done. I went home and I thought, wow, geez. This house is 50 years old, put a lot of money in it. I want to get a profit, and uh, I hope, you know, that uh, I started thinking negative. Well, geez, I can't believe this happened so quickly. You know, I got an offer after just doing that, and my mind was starting to play games with me, right? Well, just a coincidence. What if he asked for a home inspection, and they find something that's going to tie into my profit? And I immediately started canceling that thought out, and I focused that the house was sold. You know... Andreas, that night, I got the word from the real estate agent that they approved his financing, and he didn't want a home inspection. Wow. And I thought, wow, you know, 50 years old this house was, and he's investing this kind of money, and he doesn't want a home inspection. This guy crazy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it goes back to, I made it happen. I, you know, I'm 100% sure I made it happen based on, you know, this what I did there. I experienced the feeling. I made it happen. I put so much desire into it, and it made it work. Here's what happens to most people, though, because they don't have the faith and the programming that I talked about in the amygdala. <laughs> they created all these neural pathways. That's why you do certain things. Um, you, you go and state your goal. You state your affirmations. You visualize, and immediately you get a thought, I'm never going to achieve that. Or the next day or two days you do for a week, you have a fight with your wife or your spouse, and now you're off track. You have to, you miss two or three days, and you start over again. Or your downline is not doing anything. Uh, business is slow. You have another distraction, and now you're off track again. So you go into this vicious circle instead of staying focused on track. And this is why people, when the business is going south, they start looking at other opportunities and think, well, maybe the grass is greener on the side. Maybe it's the business I'm in, maybe it's my upline. They start blaming it on other people. Meanwhile, they've got all this junk going on in their mind, and they're never focused on what they really want because they're programmed 
We're programmed by the TV, by the internet, by the news that we watch, by the radio, talk radio, about other people's beliefs, which includes, puts into our own beliefs. And you wonder why we're in this vicious circle yeah. of being average. You know, so this when I started implementing this into my network marketing business, I started working less with better results. I started manifesting things faster, quicker, better. You know, I took to full responsibility with what I was doing um, and started understanding why this was happening. Understanding, and we have one of our uh, leaders that's had a, a tough time over the last few years, lots of distractions, lots of things happening in his life, et cetera, et cetera. And this guy's a quality guy, quality, quality guy. And I told him he had some incredible uh, uh, things happening in his business the last few months. And I told him, whatever you're doing, play that movie because keep on doing what you're doing. This is how simple it is. When you hit the momentum, when you tie into all these things, ladies and gentlemen, and you do it consistently, and you have faith that it's going to work, you are going to see massive results. It's not little bit of things. You'll start to see little signs. You know, good things start to happen. But then you start to you double that. It's like doubling down and backjack, and you start saying, I'm going to make this work faster and faster. And then you have these giant leaps. You have these giant leaps. You know, it goes back to um, uh, something I read a number of years ago about a, a woman down in uh, Florida who had his little son trapped, five-year-old son trapped underneath the car. And she, she went up, picked up that car. She was frantic at that moment. Nobody was helping her. She went up and picked up the car just enough for her son all the way. Nothing happened with her son. So if she took that same thought process uh, into a gym where there was no why and try to lift up that weight, there was no way that she would be able to do that. So what makes the difference? It's her why, she fell in love with her why. And when you fall in love with your why and you follow that, what I'm talking about tonight, you will achieve it. Wow, Joe. All this, just this, this concept alone was worth the entire webinar. I'm writing notes as you're, uh, as you're saying. The five-step process is definitely, uh, definitely something people can be working on uh, immediately after this webinar. Um, uh, powerful stuff. I, I'd like to recap, uh, Joe, and then I want to bring you back on uh, in regards to some, uh, just some extra stuff we can give people that are listening to on reflecting on themselves. Um, so basically, folks, as you heard it, from the best, uh, and I truly mean that in every sense of the word, uh, specific detailed goals of what you want. Okay, Not what you think you can accomplish, but truly what is it that you want. And know why you want it, just like Joe shared. The lady knew why she needed to lift up that car. And so many people write down things and not know why. They just do it because it sounds good, looks good. Maybe it will feel good. But what is it that you want? Why do you want it? And see it in a movie that you play every single day as if you're already living it. You've already manifested it. You know, you got to start believing in achieving it, believing in yourself, start attracting the people and the things, and... Uh, now you're operating at a very high level of vibration where you start again attracting. As Joe says, you start attracting some great things and then you start attracting bigger leaps of, of great things. So basically what we say is the universe starts bending to your needs and your wants. So here it is, folks. This is the movie that should be playing in your head, as Joe mentioned, every day. You have to have the end in mind. I call it the end in mind video. Okay, whatever that goal is, focus on two or three things of what you really want, detailed, specific. You can see it, smell it. It's your purpose. Um, and it's got, you gotta, you gotta live it as if you've already achieved it. And if you look at that movie and you play that movie in your head and it doesn't make you smile or it doesn't make you emotional, folks, you don't have a movie strong enough for your subconscious mind 
to start creating it. I play my movie over and over and over again, and I'm not ashamed to share with all of you that I have tears running out of my eyes when I play that movie because I'm living it and it feels fantastic. And I want to let people know listening here today and people that are going to be listening to this because we're recording this, um, that it can change your world if you put this, these concepts, these principles, what Joe shared with you, it can change your world. See, you don't have to already live it physically today, but if you can already physically detailed live it in your mind over and over again, it's only a matter of time where it becomes a reality. Very, very powerful stuff. Now, those you surround yourself with, those you listen to, who you associate with on a regular basis can either magnify your vision or they can destroy it. The law of association is one of them, is that it's, it's, it's such a powerful principle, is one that many people think they understand it, but they don't. And I'm not going to get into this, because this could be a whole training in itself, where people stay in relationships they know they shouldn't stay in. Uh, people are attracting negativity based on the people they surround themselves with. And they know it, but they don't know it. It's one of the most powerful universal principles that play a significant role in your belief and in attracting the right things and achieving your goals. So again, another topic for another time. But again, your goals can be magnified or destroyed based on the people you listen to, you surround yourself with, and that you associate yourself with. So, Joe, I know you uh, also put a kind of a, a four-step reflection system together that everybody can jot down. And because it's a brand new year, this is something that many leaders do uh, uh, very often. It's not a one-time-a-year thing. But uh, this is something that I know I recently did in November. I also did it in the summer of last year. So I kind of do this on a quarterly basis. Um, I know many people do it on a weekly basis. But at the minimum, you know, it's, it's like you know, washing your kitchen. You know? You, know, you wash it on a weekly basis, but then you do that power wash. So this is, <laughs> this is kind of that, that power reflection system that I want all of you guys to write down and reflect on what it is that you are doing, what you did, what you need to do, and basically Joe Garcia is going to go over this with each and every one of you. So Joe, I'm going to pass it back over to you. Yeah, just quickly, Andres, uh, just because of time here, um, you know, every year, you know, we're told to review what, you know, high achievers, top achievers, you know, uh, most of us review what we've done the previous year and how we can improve. So I have department uh, places in different departments that allow us to, um, you know, help us become better. You know, number one, uh, I'm, as you probably can't tell <laughs> by this call, I guess, um, I'm really into personal development. I believe that uh, if you help people become greater by re helping them raise their conscious level, they'll figure out the rest. So I've experienced it myself personally in my life. So personal development, so um, I, I can kind of give you an example. Back in 2001, you know, I got to the point in my personal development where all the books started feeling the same. <laughs> I would read a book and say, well, I haven't read this book already because they all said the same thing. I got a little tired of reading self-help, and it's, and it's because all I was doing was reading them. And I started understanding that I needed to find and focus on three or four books that resonate with me. And all I did was really focus on those books or CD seminars. So my goal was to find something that I knew I could take and run with. So for example, in, in September 2001, a friend of mine gave me the Born Rich series by Bob Proctor. It was exactly what I wanted and needed at that time. You know. For three years straight, Andreas, while doing my morning workout, that's all I ever listened to. I was so focused on that program, and that allowed me to get to the next level in my life, just listening to that over and over and over again. 
So I started understanding if I started focusing on three or four books and really studying the material, not reading it, studying it, I would master the teachers and what they were teaching. And, and I continue doing that today, and this is what I've been preaching for years. So with personal development, if you're reading a half an hour a day, which I was back then, and I was getting X results, I thought, wow, if I could focus on a few books and a few programs, and I can double that, I should get double results. I'll learn faster. I'll raise my conscious level faster. Then my results should become uh, faster, better, quicker. And that's what happened to me. So every year, I look at what I'm doing personal development-wise and how I can improve it. What are some areas that I need to improve? Patience, leadership, uh, focus. Um, you know, if you have a hard time with my, the, the goal-setting process that I just shared with you, uh, what what is getting you off track? So really go into the personal development area. And, and you know, if you're getting X results and you're on track, I would recommend double it. Do a little bit more, and you see what happens. Second thing is you need to look at your empowering habits. I covered this earlier. What were you doing during the year? What do you tend to do? How do you? What is your daily method of operation? What do you do with your mindset? When are you reading? I would recommend that you read and and do things at the same time every day. If you do that, you get into positive habits. It just it's like brushing your teeth. You don't think about it anymore. So if you do it every day, we're you're going to build up the neurons in your brain to the point where you don't even have to think about it. It starts to become a lifestyle, Andreas. Mm. Third thing is your habits when it comes to activity. Uh, <laughs> activity is key. You need to show the universe that you are serious. One of the strategies I used for years, Andreas, and this was just a philosophy of mine, is I understood something inside me was telling me, Joe, if you miss that meeting, if you miss that conference call, if you uh, miss that event, you're probably telling you universe, the universe that you don't want it as bad. And <laughs> I bought into that philosophy. I knew that I was the universe. And if I was letting myself down, procrastinating that to the next step, to the next day, I was telling the universe, more importantly myself, that I didn't want it as bad. And I thought, wow, maybe I would miss something. So I never, I bought in, all in. I was all in in everything that I did because I was afraid that I was telling the universe, you don't, Joe, you don't really need, want it as bad, so we'll delay your success another year or two. I was all in all the time with everything that I did, with my kids, with my marriage, with my business, with my friendships, with my other relationships. I bought in all in all the time. So activity is, is critical to our philosophy, to everything that we do in our business. So look at the activity that you've done over the last year, and your question should be, am I show if the universe looked at this right now, would they say, wow, this is a serious disciple. They really want to succeed. Or would they say, geez, this activity is telling me that they should be playing in the minor leagues <laughs> right now. Activity is king. So here's the thing, guys. If you talk to thir in network marketing, if you had 300 prospects that you put through the system in 2012, you got X amount of results. Maybe you should up it by another 100, and you guaranteed your results will be more, provided you ra continue to raise your conscious level. And the more you raise your conscious level, Andreas, the less activity that you actually need to get the results. So that is the process that I do every single year. Um, and the last thing that I would recommend, and going back to the personal development, is choose one aspect of your life that you feel may be holding you back. And it's been there all along. And make a goal that you're going to overcome it. Because hmm. there's usually one thing in your life that you're manifesting over and over and over again. So if you want to quit your job and you've been telling yourself that you want to 
really quit your job the last five, six, seven years? How come it hasn't happened by now? If you've been working in your business all these years. Maybe it's because you don't want it as bad as you think you do. Because if you did, maybe the activity would be a lot more. Maybe your belief would be a lot more. Maybe you would have read a little bit more. Maybe you would have done a little bit more. Great stuff, great stuff. And we know, again, the major influences that has to do with all this is the law of association, who you're hanging out with, why you're hanging out with them, who are you paying attention to, and why are you paying attention to them. So, you know, you right, mentioned a couple... I want to get to that because it's real important, Andreas. Uh -huh, I'm going to back up then, it's, yeah. Yeah, and this is, you know, this is something I've preached for you for years. You know, we're not... Uh, every human being in this world is fantastic, is incredible. We are made of God likeness of God. You read that in the Bible. You don't even have to be religious in any way. Just read that in the Bible and just, if, if that is true, we're made in the likeness of God, we can do incredible things. It's been proven what human beings have done for centuries. Just look at this internet. It was thought of by a human being and expanded. It's amazing what has transpired in our lifetime. And it's amazing to me that people think we're human beings are not perfect. We are perfect. In every every sense of the word, we are perfect. We're not there to make mistakes. You know, that's just what I believe in. We are perfect because we're made in the likeness of God. So when you when I thought about that, uh, the challenge is is we have all these distractions, all this programming, all this negativity that is surrounding ourselves constantly. Sometimes we get tied into that. No matter what we're doing, you know, the weeds are growing and we don't understand how to put it out. And the biggest thing that has kept me on track is I've been careful who I surrounded myself in the business world, in my relationships, everything that I do. I want to be around winners. I want to work with winners. And there are people out there that think they're in the right business model. And they've got, they love the product, they love their compensation plan, they love whatever they do. They're thinking the wrong way. Because if they're not involved with the right people, long term, uh, they'll continue to have a vicious cycle in life where they're still searching for that love of that product or the compensation plan. Surround yourself with the right people. My business partner, Dan Cattle, a uh, multimillionaire legend in this industry, he's moved down to Florida in the summer, in the winter time, and in his building there, there is more wealth in that building uh, uh, than any place in North America <laughs> in the winter time. And he bought that place specifically because he wanted to hang out with billionaires. It's made him better. It's fueled his desire. Fueled his desire. I have a neighbor up the street here his multi-million home, his door is worth $10 million, guys. $10 million. So when you hang out with people that think bigger, that do big, bigger things, that are go-getters, you know, that is a huge influence on what you do every day, no matter how much personal development you're doing, Andres. So it's real important that you're with the right people on a consistent basis. Right people big, spells great success. And how do you know if you're the right people? Uh, most everyone has that intuition. Everyone has that intuition. If you're aligned with your goals and your dreams, you will know if you're right with the right people eventually. Just have to look at their background, what they've done. If they've been involved in five, six, seven, eight different companies, and they're all over the place, they're distracted, not focus, you know, they've succeeded. Do you want to hang out with those people? You want to become like them? Go ahead. That's fine. I'm not judging them. That's the way they, they decide to lead their life. But ultimately with me, uh, I was very cognizant of that. And that was the number one decision that I made is that has made me who I am today in all areas of my life. Powerful stuff, Joe. Um, 
you mentioned a couple of books here, and I know there's tons of them out there. You kind of mentioned some of the ones that we have here. Um, the books that we have here are Science of Getting Rich, The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, a powerful book, The Magic of Thinking Big. You just talked about surrounding yourself with big thinkers. Uh, Consciously Creating Circumstances, a book you recommended to me, Joe, and let me tell you, has made a big a big impact, small read, an easy read, but a, a big impact um, in, in as far as the subconscious mind, and of course the power of the subconscious mind, um, and also Joe, a, a program you also recommended to me as well um, by Dr. Robert Anthony, The Secret of Deliberate Creation, um, and it's basically uh, a lot of the things that we kind of shared here, other aspects of how to create basically your thoughts are things as you mentioned Jill but again just wanted to give people that are listening just a, another tool that they can take on if you if you like then you bought what you heard here today um, these are kind of the books and also the audio programs that will continue to carry on uh, some of the things that Joe has mentioned here today in helping you again manifest the goals that you truly want because you're going to redo your goals and do them in the way that we talked about it so you can start manifesting um, the things that you want in your life. Joe, I have to say it's been a pleasure. Um, you know, we didn't really rehearse anything uh, here in this training. Uh, and of course, uh, your success and what you've done uh, in the industry what you have done for people all over the world uh, literally um, is truly iconic and uh, I want to thank you for the time that you took here today to share with everybody that's listening I want to thank you for um, being part of my life my family's life and uh, uh, the things that you teach and more importantly who you are and you know, as you said this as well it's the people that you surround yourself you know who you join is more important than what you join and uh, it's something that I've adopted a long time ago um, and uh, it, it's not just what people are saying it's who they really are and I have to say Joe from the bottom of my heart you are um, at that highest level of any credibility that I can give any human being and I want to thank you for the time I want to thank you for your experience your teachings um, and your honesty and um, I also uh, put down here for people who would like to uh, 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 send us some feedback uh, on what you thought on this call uh, I've also um, added the uh, my email address I've added Joe's email uh, address as well we'd love to hear your feedback uh, Joe any last comments here before we say uh, goodbye to everybody who's listening yes when your dreams are greater than your fears you can accomplish global things guys believe in your greatness awesome. have a great uh, night thanks very much for your time and uh, good night God bless Awesome, Joe. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all of you once again for joining us here today. Wishing you uh, a fantastic 2013 uh, and beyond and hope that the information you received today was well worth the time you invested in hearing uh, myself as well as the great Joe Garcia. We want to thank you once again and uh, manifest the things that you want because you know you can. Thank you, everyone.